Hello, and welcome to the God Plane After Show. We are about to be discussing episode six, the uh, Prison of Knowledge. Uh, we got a little bit personal up in here, a little bit faster than I think a couple of us expected. So, um, Sophie, how much trouble am, am I in? Discuss. <laughs> um, not too much, but I literally had to do a check with David, like, she mentioned <laughs> the butcher. Kay never said to me if that was what he was known as. Is that him? Because if it is, okay. Um, yeah, I. That was a lot more than I thought I was gonna have to give it once. Like I was hope I was gonna try to like keep seeding it along like I have been. But... That was pretty organic though. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. It I really liked well. it. Yeah, I'm. Oh, I'm glad. I hope I. I was like, oh fuck, I might derail things if I try to get questions. But I'm like at the point where it's like, the cat so doesn't like Ozim, and like it's confusing to him at this point, and it's more frustrating to just have to do this stupid telephone. And it's like, why doesn't the cat like him? <laughs> he keeps being so cryptic about it, and like, ugh, let's just fucking crack that open while we're down here, where it's hopefully safer than we. I mean, probably won't be, but, you know, a spot where we're not trying to avoid anything. Because um, if the wizard came back, the wizard came back, whatever. Uh, you're not, I mean, I guess it's, the, my, you're not in trouble. It's more just like, okay, I'm trying to remember what we discussed in our three hour phone call that one time. And I'm like, okay. I didn't take enough notes. I'm not sure well, where this is going. Like, <laughs> I also, like, very deliberately, uh, things were changed around. Yeah, Facts yeah, yeah, were yeah, changed. Sure. Because um, I alluded to it, but I'm going to just come straight out and say it so that there's no, like, confusion. Um, Willie and Ozum are from the same world. Um, dun, dun, dun. but separated by a very long time so I wanted to have that element of like the story got told and retold and it was changed and it warped over time um, partially because A that's just fun and partially because like I wanted to see how much would Ozum defend himself how much would he try and correct like I thought that would be an interesting thing to play with rather than just copy pasting this is what happened this yeah, is what yeah. I said yeah, because it's like the the prince thing is the one thing that I that like you know we had established as like the big regret aside from person that Things still that he still isn't gonna right yeah now. yeah not talking about her just yet um, but then yeah like the detail of Caldera where my mind's like hmm no that's not what happened. They escaped there after stuff happened, but like, this is me telling, you know, the players and not the characters, but like, there's there's one of the big changes, is that he had fled to Caldera to escape, along with she who is not named yet. Um, but yes, he was the Butcher. He... She she pulled a little bit from something that I wrote for him where I he talks about being the the story that mothers would tell their children at night to keep them from misbehaving um, about this boy who had so much promise and instead was formed into this horrible general that you know did this supreme slash sovereign this bidding. Um, through all manners of horrible methods uh, but then the the supreme dying I guess because now okay you've said that there's like a time difference with them um, that really throws him for a loop because the supreme was still alive at, when Ozem was being brought into the god plane so he's like it's my question like is all been pulled out of your stories at certain points. My question is is this uh story available like on a Google Doc or something like that like actually written out? Yeah, I wrote uh, a whole backstory for him. 
and can it be shared with the players and also the viewers that we can like no. read uh, well not your specific like actual <laughs> backstory but willie's um, version that she knows as, yeah. a, as a fable is sort it of thing. on yeah. like audible or something yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um i will leave that to cassandra if if you want to uh, i did give cassandra a little bit of the like some of the story yeah. um so cassandra that is up to you if you want to be the relayer of information or if you would like to share this uh you are a bard you can yeah, I don't know if you were like verbally told or if you got like a, a yeah, written there's, piece. There's a, there's a written yeah, there's piece. a there's a written one. And I can, oh, like, perfect. Totally share it either. Yeah, because I'd love to like I love that lore drop. Yeah, I'd love to be able to read it. Yeah, but that's a cool tale. Oh, it's I'll almost share, like I've been dropping hints more. and things. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll share. Part. I'll share the actual like Ozum's actual backstory when we're done with it because we're not naming some of the characters yet. Yeah, and I think it's hard for Ozum because he's so uncaring aside from this that like he's not gonna explore and try to, like the fact that he was looking for a book on his country is big for him because he's not gonna try to look for anything different. I was like confused when he was like, I wanna find that book. I was like, why? Like <laughs> was, Yeah. Because aside book. from that, he's not gonna go looking for lore. He's not gonna investigate something if it's sparkly and is has an arrow pointing at it that says investigate me he's not gonna do it like he's just here to attempt this task and he does not give a shit like i said if he succeeds or not if he dies he dies that's he's not actively trying to die but if he dies he dies he doesn't care i do like that when confronted with lily essentially saying well you're a monster and like you got to try that there there was definitely a lot of side eyeing and like i mean yeah i yeah i'm here yeah I, i'll help you guys and i i didn't expect that from the character no i mean that's his mentality like he he's not going to fail you he's he's still going to push on with the task I but like the, the outcome does it. not matter to him yeah but well he I wants like to the fact that he you. said it out loud yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a reassurance that I didn't expect from him at that moment, especially being, like... After what he just told you. (laughs) Yeah, the entire party basically looking at him in a completely different light, and that's the moment he chooses to go, like, let me just drop some reassurance up in here. (laughs) Yeah, and because, I mean, Willie completely missed the fact that he's hiding from her that her brother's dead. Like, Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he knows, he knows that he did terrible things he knows that he's past the point of being able to redeem himself and the fact that he had this person in his life that was willing to take a chance on him and see him in a different way and to be with him it's like you know you mentioning that is probably really cut deep on him because he doesn't understand either he doesn't know why this woman was interested in taking this chance on him he doesn't feel yeah. deserving love- of it I love how naturally that happened because she was so moved when he hinted at it when they first discussed it and she noticed it and she was just like, oh, you know, being a storyteller and the most naive of the entire group, when a character like that sees someone who has had a love in their life and has been with somebody to some degree, that must mean like they must be a decent person. You can't love someone who is a monster. So. It was immediately the thing that she thought up, like, how could you do all those things and have someone and do that like normal people? Mm -hmm. And again, he fully agrees with you. He doesn't know because he still sees himself as a monster. He knows that he, the, what he has learned, like, thanks to the person and just the revelations that came with that, like, he doesn't look at himself the same he has these internal struggles with himself every every day where he's just like how could I have done that how like he's shocked that you know Rook is willing to say that he's his friend because he's like how could anyone I had someone who loved me and that was a miracle in itself but to have someone actively call me a friend when I'm hiding this from them it didn't feel right you know where he's like I this woman I told her everything and she still took a chance, but how could I let someone call me a friend when they know nothing about me? And that's not, that's almost unfair. Um, And we see the soft boy in Ozum. 
Yeah, I do, we do. I do like how uh, like there's a lot of conflict between Willie and Ozim that like grind on each other and all that kind of stuff. Like maybe it's sometimes it's more one sided, but then the growth also happens like with them. So it's like really really cool to see. I, I'm, I'm into this bro ship right now. I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> right? this is this sure. Brooke like you're Brooke gonna be friends, right? <laughs> well, I, we got to say it at this point. The quick comment with the Willie thing is that I think Willie's naivete is one frustrating to him, but it also is just like it's more dangerous for her to have that lack of information. So why, like, it's going to be traumatizing for her, aside from her brother being dead, but, like, hiding certain things that, like, she's putting the pieces together, but she's not there yet. quite, like, they're so close, she just needs to press down and have them click, and she's not doing it, and he's like, I can't, if these people want to survive, how are they going to do that when things aren't clicking? And so even if it's not directly related to, you know, in his mind, it's not directly related to the success of the group. It's like, I'm still going to tell her. One, because it doesn't fully bother him to traumatize her a little bit. Like, he's, you know, he's just like, I'm whatever. You can have a little trauma. It's a pain. Like, I'm the, I am the bad guy. It's okay. I know I am a bad guy. I might, like, I'd rather they look at me as a bad guy because it's true than someone else getting falsely colored as one because that's wrong. And then, yeah, the bro, the bromance with Rook and Ozem. And bromance with Rook and Ozem. Rook, Oza. <laughs> Rook oh, trying to explain the stories to him Love where it's it. like me trying to hint like Ozem did not grow up with any of these stories that like he was stolen away as a child. There was no one to tell him these stories. <laughs> like you're, I think you were talking about yourself with the middle school thing, but I thought you were talking about Rook. So I was oh, like, I was talking about Rook as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Like the, you didn't go to middle school. <laughs> like he was he was shoved in a military encampment. With I other feel like we learned were... so much about Rook, like. Yeah. The, the fanboy thing, the BL so thing, cute. the oh my god, uh, the the lore <laughs> dump at the end. The BL thing was so fun. That was perfect. <laughs> that was perfect. So good. <laughs> perfect. It's always fun to play these games, and then uh, because I I also love how like Nabi and and uh, Rook are becoming more friends as well. Uh, through like erotic fanfic and being able to share that. <laughs> <laughs> so I just like that Rook is thing. just like the thing. Yeah. you guys get really... to bond over fanfic. Willie and Ozem are bonding over trauma. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I forget Rook is just like everybody in this darn group is gonna be my friend at the end. Exactly. Of yeah. That's great. I love I mean, it. He is kind of like the peacemaker. Like he just is like he'll like you know try to get to know everybody on a personal level and then. And then use that to kind of like be like, hey, it's cool, like everything's fine, like we'll get through this kind of thing. If we're gonna be stuck together, may as well be homies. He's he's the party dad. He's the dad of the party. That's the dad of the um, party. <laughs> <laughs> he's party like, dad, I... party dad in the streets, and no, <laughs> party dad in the streets and party dad in the book sheets. <laughs> the book sheets. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> No, Perfect. I felt yeah. it the moment, like, I forget which episode it was, but I was just like, this is such a dad character, when there was an awkward silence, and he leans back and drums his hands on his chest, going, well, we better hit that dusty tray. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just like, oh, my dad's done that. <laughs> yeah, be like, well, yeah. Yeah, it was great. So good. Yeah, y'all are y'all are picking up some of the hints I've been dropping. Yeah. Lore connections seem to be being made. I know you're getting there already, Sophie, but it has been fun to see. A little bit, not too much. I think the butcher thing is what clearly was like my big hint. I might have missed some of the smaller ones, but the like I said, I've been sprinkling things and just kind of waiting for like, let's see if this comes up. Well, let's see if this comes up. Oh well, it's hard because with the purple thing, I'm sitting here like, I know what she's talking about. I know exactly what this is. And like, I, I, I'm like trying to see how it will relate to the guy, but. Oh, 
god. <laughs> I'm and now we got this... our books. Now my books. Plus me and Tassik are like weird long distance homies, which is kind of like <laughs> interesting. We're both like... She's like, she's very curious to meet, like she wants to meet him because she wants to see like the dark side of her. It's like the Harry she Potter Tom like, Riddle sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like very interested. Like the more she reads his journals, the more she's like, I want to know who this guy is. Like I want to know how this happened because she definitely sees a lot of herself in his story and how he progressed and kind of the thing. So it's cool. Mm. It's Willie, cool to you're... hear that because I did not. I mean, she's so cagey. She, I didn't pick up on that as a player or as a character at all, that she's feeling that comparison. So I was getting worried. I was like, if Nobby was going to start suggesting attempting some of the things that mm -hmm. she was like, I Ozum was going to pull her back and be like, don't. What did it say about the mirror? Like, trying these things could be considered the mirror. Oh, we like, never saw the dark mirror, did we? Or whatever it was. Yeah, but it could be, like, it, it could be, be metaphorical. Oh, right? or the okay. dark mirror of herself yeah. because she's into all the, like, she wants that knowledge. She wants to know. And that would be a similar path that she would go down because if she just learned all the information in the book, she should be able to come up with something. So yeah. the fact that he did that and kind of got like more and more kind of like out of it as he did that she's kind of like she's intrigued like intrigued but also still at the point where she's cautious enough that like she wants to know more but is like also afraid to know more at the same time mm. it's a risky click but she's like maybe if i open a private browser window yeah, right exactly. right exactly <laughs> like <laughs> <if> <laughs> incognito perhaps yeah. like yeah so good well, you are at least for now out of the house. You're in a weird library that none of you quite passed the wisdom check to figure out how it works. I mean, that happy. one brain cell is just working so hard. She's happy. <laughs> she's distracted. Navi's just distracted by all the books. She just oh, can't yeah. stop just touching and looking at them all. Ozum nope. doesn't care, but now he's horrified at the fact that he has had to talk about himself. <laughs> Nobby. Rook wants Nobby to feel like share, like, <laughs> let's, like to, to, to figure out what's going on and be like. Well, I think she's afraid right now too because of everything that's happening with Tassik and how close we are to like her, her kind of stuff, like with him, um, kind of being the way he is. That she's like she doesn't want to be seen in the same light after all of the information that she shared with everybody about him, you know, type thing. Um, I will I will say one thing about the books in the library. Like, part of it is a story. To, so, like, like D'Angelo, you were trying to interact with the bookshelves and, like, trying to, like, really look at it. And part of it was a lore decision of why the library is set up the way it is um, and sort of, like, the, the machinations of Tazic. But um it it's also like a funneling thing like when you when you walk into a giant library you can find a book on literally anything um and so rather than you know have players waste a bunch of time going oh well this shelf has you know book a book on books on metaphysics and then having to like instantly come up with lore for that instead we found a way to sort of funnel relevant lore that you guys would actually be interested in um, into a more narrow space. And so, like, the bookshelves are kind of set up to be like, this isn't where you look. You should look elsewhere. Yeah. That's cool. Cause, cause yeah. I, don't, I don't enjoy making people roll a billion checks to, like, get a throwaway factoid. I'd rather be like, like, like when you were trying to get the shelf to move. I'm like, okay, look, you've done it twice. I'm not going to make you do it again. You can decide how long your character's going to keep messing with stuff. But, like, this is how this world works. I'm not going to make you roll for things that aren't fun. I'm going to make you roll for things that are fun and exciting. Yeah, I totally missed that. I thought it, I thought what I had interpreted that as uh, was there was a secret, like, a room or something like that. And by interacting in that area, you would be able to get access to that, yeah. you know, sort of thing. So, And that's, you walked into a space and 
I expected you to make that jump, right? Like, and I just wanted to make it clear that like you're hearing these clicks and these yeah. things all over, and you've tried, and I made you do the rolls and the check, and then like, okay, twice now you've tried. You're gonna try a third time. I'm gonna tell you. You could, you can keep your character playing this if you want to. I love like I play. Most of my characters are eight intelligence at this point. Yeah. Yeah, we have no skill monkeys in this group. I don't think. Yeah. Um, and like I love like making the dumb decision, but uh, you know, oh, letting the character do the dumb thing is really entertaining. But you as the player, I'm not gonna make you keep doing it. But Rook doesn't quit. <laughs> I know. I'm yeah. I'm great with I'm great with persuasion and athletics and charisma. I got right. athletics. I don't have to persuade oh, that so many people. I, yeah, I got athletics, and medicine, yeah. and survival. And that's it. Or persuasion as well. Yeah, but we got barely any NPCs to it. <laughs> yeah, now I have to use it on poor Willie. Like, come on. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we you, could use that Nobby. Be like, you've hey, intimidated Nobby. pretty much us. every NPC you've come across. Yes, you because definitely I want make to. good use of that. I love it. But, He's uh, big and beefy for a reason. <laughs> Let me use it. Right. Uh, I mean, big and beefy. So, yes, you all have seen a little bit of how I try to play with lore dumps in that I try to sprinkle them places and let you all put pieces together. Because I don't want to make you sit for a 20-minute lecture. I'd rather have you read a journal and then I'll talk about it. Yeah. I, I mean, I gotta say, fun. this was, like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, we didn't fight anything this yeah episode, it was very it was, it was yeah. really entertaining uh, super it was fun. rp like heavy that. yeah you got tricked by a, a kid yeah <laughs> oh that was great wasn't quite tricked <laughs> ozum had the inkling and that's why he was talking to him and saying oh how about we play the game i was so delighted when uh d'angelo you were like you told us there would be rooms that don't have terrible things and i'm like well it wasn't a terrible thing it's just a kid being a dick and mist cat really likes the kid so he played along because he thought that would be fun so there was no monster with chains chasing you that was just tobias being a kid so yeah at one point i was like we should just fight this monster we should just get it over with <laughs> and then like just murder it and then sure enough there was never a monster yeah mm -mm. no monster in that case, there was a lot. You all missed a lot. There were there was some cool stuff hidden in there. There were some fun provisions. There was a bottle of alcohol, a couple bottles of alcohol. Yep. Uh, but there was a creepy uh, boneless. They're they're a new kind of. They're like a zombie with no bones that just like wrap around you. Um, oh gross! Missed told that us, one. Told us not to interact with anything, so we didn't. We we just tried to go through the thing, <laughs> point A to point B, and like. The idea of a boneless zombie like makes me like my sensory self just like, <laughs> like I might I, I might like drop that. the picture yeah. into the chat just so you all can see. It's like an nice. actual <laughs> monster and it's <laughs> wonderfully terrible. That's amazing. Oh um, and the closets absolutely would have eaten you. Thank God no one went <laughs> into one. Was that the was that the secret about the glowing closets? Mm -hmm. They said that the book journal said that they didn't come back for a while. Oh. Yeah. Um, and to to sort of offset that, we also put a lot of positive stuff in the house as well, which we aren't going to necessarily give you details on because we may move that to other places. But we definitely wanted to make sure that it wasn't like we you you can't touch anything because everything will kill you. Also, the um, really, you say really that, terrible but... thing about the closets is if you got eaten in the closets and then the other rest of the party walked through the house, the person who was missing would appear in those portraits and the kids would be smiling. Love that. Ooh, Never interact like with anything that. we don't have to. Got it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, see, you say that, but all the stuff, the, the good stuff's in there too, but all the stuff we ever interact with is always the bad, the bad. stuff. If this needle pokes you, you get your soul sucked out. It's I like... mean, look, you did get advantage or an auto pass. <laughs> also, that, that wasn't even the, the worst fight in that house. Like, you guys bear. You guys didn't see the panic that I had when I was like, dear K, are they doing this one or are they doing the marionette? 
Um, and she did a very good job of keeping a, a straight face while I was over here sweating. I was like, okay, I have to get this stat block. Oh my like, god. And the show's is this... gonna end in episode four. Got it. It's like, right, we... right. Like, I was like, <laughs> could you, like, could you win this fight? So. But at least for now, you're out of the haunted house. Will you end up back in it? I don't know. You'll have to come back next week. Wait, 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 wait. You had said that this was not the way you initially thought it was going to go, or that you didn't think this would happen all at once. Could you give us a hint as to how you thought this was potentially going to go? I didn't think we'd be uh, derailed by uh, the sharing circle and group therapy. Fair. And it was wonderful. Oh, and I think Rook really needed it. Like, Rook, like, was ready to unburden his soul. Really was. <laughs> Those of them could have done without that. <laughs> all of our journeys stuff. are different. We get there in different ways, different times. Yep. So and there's still so much about the boy that you guys don't. know. <laughs> this is a lot. You learned a lot. Don't yeah. know yet. Yeah. There's still. Mm -hmm. But we have been talking about this episode for 25 minutes, and I'm sure That's at least a good couple of episode. you. Need it was to take yeah. A break. Is very Thank good. you so much for playing. This episode was so much fun. I had so much fun watching you all play. Thank you for being amazing players and sharing your character secrets if you chose to and scrounging <laughs> out of it if you chose not to. And just, this was some really amazing roleplay. I appreciate you all so much. I hope you had fun and I hope to see you next week when we'll see what else is waiting for you in the library. Oh boy. Mm. Oh boy. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you Tuesday. Bye. Oh, are we ready? <laughs> <laughs>